Good afternoon everyone, Country Flyboy here, and today, extra features, or other, or whatever. I couldn't really decide what to name this. There's really only one thing we're going over today, and that's the weather radar. But before we do, I want to make an announcement. Uh, there were more videos planned in this series. I've decided to cancel one of the videos, and that is the flight planning video. The reason I've decided to cancel is because I got the script written, and I read through it several times, and then I realized a lot of that information wasn't necessarily about the 208. Most of it was general flight planning stuff, so I've decided to not really cancel that video overall, but at least put it on hold and not make it part of the 208 series. So we're going to skip that one and go straight to the other information, and then the next video is going to be the last one where we talk about other variants of the caravan. Today, uh, there's just one additional system that I want to talk about, and that's the, uh, the weather radar. Uh, the, the, uh, the operation of the weather radar is extremely complex, so I'm probably not going to be going over everything to know about it in this video. Uh, I'm going to be keep it really short, concise, and limit it to just the 208, how it's where the radar works but there will be a couple of videos linked in the description if you want to know more uh, but we're just going to keep it limited to the 208 with the uh, weather radar so we're only going to go over the more simplistic operation there is a lot more to know though i'm probably going to end up having to do a dedicated video for weather radar one day but anyway let's get on to it the Cessna Caravan is equipped with a Bendex King Type RDR2000 Digital Weather Radar System. This system and some of its features was recreated by Coronado in the Cessna Caravan add-on. It consists of a wing-mounted receiver transmitter containing a 12-inch X-band radar antenna and the panel-mounted indicator. The system is designed to detect significant en route weather formations up to a distance of 240 nautical miles to preclude the undesired penetration of heavy weather and its associated turbulence. The antenna is fully stabilized to account for up to plus or minus 30 degrees pitch and roll. The display has four colors to show various levels of rain intensity. In increasing order, they are green, yellow, red, and magenta. IRL, the unit also has a ground mapping mode which can display prominent topographical features and a vertical profile mode to display the vertical cross section for, of a weather formation. Sadly, Coronado did not model all features of the radar due to limitations in the weather engine of FSX. Notably, the radar only shows you where clouds are, not where precip is. The features not modeled by Coronado include track adjustment, gain control, navigation mode, ground mapping mode, vertical profile mode, and relative altitude display. However, test mode, range adjustment, tilt control, screen brightness, and the flight plan log are all functional. The proper use of weather radar is a very in-depth topic and requires way more information than I could possibly provide in one video. And most of it is beyond the scope of just the Cessna 208, so we won't be going over how to use it 100% properly, but we will go over the various buttons, and I'll link a video in the description that will explain the radar in much more depth. Though here I will try to explain the basics of the radar's operations. Warning. The system generates microwave radiation when operating in the WXA, WX, and MAP modes. Improper use or exposure may cause seriously, serious bodily harm. It is vitally important you make sure the weather radar is in standby or test mode whilst on the ground and during takeoff and landing. Okay, so on the weather radar, on the top left, we have the brightness knob. This allows you to adjust the brightness of the, uh, of the uh, radar screen. Pretty much all the buttons on the left side don't work. Uh, they're not functional. Uh, but the right side is the one we're going to focus on. So starting from the top of the right side, the operational mode knob. Uh, so it can, it, it's what controls the radar. Off, standby, test, on, and log are its operational modes. So in the off position, the radar is completely cut off, no power to it, it's not working at all. 
Standby will power up the radar, but it will not transmit any information and the radar is simply just turned on. Test mode will run a self-test of the radar and there will be colored bands on the screen to make sure the screen is working and all colors are viewable on it. The on mode will switch the radar on and it will start transmitting uh, radar energy. This is You want to have this turned on after takeoff and off before landing. Switch it back to test or standby mode before landing. In log mode, it will show you a, uh, a brief of your current active flight plan. Now, right below that are the range increase and range decrease buttons, and below that are the track adjustment options. And just below that is a tilt knob where you can tilt the radar up and down. Now, tilt control is a, a very important part of radar operation. Uh, I'll link a video in the description to make things a lot easier to how that thing works, but basically it allows you to tilt the beam of the radar up or down relative to the horizon. Put simply, the radar functions much like a flashlight in a dark room. Uh, just for a moment, imagine the storms as mirrors. The shinier the mirror, meaning the more intense the storm, the more light the mirror will reflect. But if the beam of light does not hit the mirror, then there is no reflected light to come back to your eyeballs. Some things are more reflective than others. For our purposes, a raindrop is basically round and is a good reflector of radar energy. However, a snowflake is not and is a very poor reflector of radar energy. Storms are not flat, they are vertical too. This is why you have the tilt function in the radar. Remember that the beam of energy extends from the radome of the aircraft in a horizontal cone. If the radar is left at zero degrees of tilt, then the closer something is to the radar, the more likely it is not to be seen. You can clearly see that in this image. Note, earlier I said raindrops are better reflectors than snowflakes. Well, clouds containing precip that are above 18,000 feet, you can assume that the precip is frozen and will reflect less energy than it would when thawed. This means that you may think it's safe to try to climb above the red and go through the green, but it's not. The radar is lying to you. There's more than just green and yellow there. One final thing, and well actually two final things. A lot of aircraft have onboard radars pumping out energy in all directions. It's entirely possible that you will receive radar energy that was not reflected by your radar, but instead transmitted from another aircraft. In this case, you may see what appears to be a line of precip extending in a very narrow cone from your aircraft. It looks something like this. This is interference from other weather radars operating in the air, and it's usually temporary. Lastly, there is another use for radar approaches. Though I don't think this is common anymore, some airports have what's called radar reflectors positioned in key areas of the airport. Uh, these things are basically mirrors, actually they're corner reflectors. Uh, there's a video from Smarter Every Day done in collaboration with Minute Physics that will explain it much better. Link in the description. Sometimes you will still see radar reflectors in use. They appear on the airport diagrams like so. And this is what they look like. So that does it for the weather radar. Yeah, it was a bit of a quick video, but that's good. The next video is just talking information, differences between the various versions of the 208. Uh, sorry it took so long to get this series finished. Real life stuff happened. Uh, I do have some exciting plans coming up if I can ever get around to doing them. So anyway, hope you enjoyed it and we shall see you next time. Take care everyone.